part one, production number uh, 1873, date recorded uh, 4th of the 2th, 75, take one. Greetings and welcome to Aquarius, which comes to you from the Royal Opera House, Covent Garden, on a very special occasion. It was back in 1952 that a young Australian singer named Joan Sutherland made her debut in this house. She'd come to Britain with a scholarship, having won the title of Australia's finest singer, which indeed she was. And for the next few years, she appeared in many roles here. And it was in 1958 that she really hit the operatic headlines. The opera was Lucia di Lammermoor and the critics immediately hailed her as another Melba. And really, she's not stopped singing all over the world ever since. She's one of the age's finest operatic prima donnas. Now, recently, Joan Sutherland returned to Covent Garden to appear in La Traviata. And it was here at Christmas that the terrible news came of the disaster which hit Darwin in Northern Australia, the tornado which more or less laid the city waste. Now, she and her husband, the conductor Richard Bonning, couldn't get back to Australia, but they let it be known here that they very much wanted to take part in some charity operatic concert in order to raise funds for the relief of Darwin. And when they heard this news, the Royal Philharmonic offered their services, and so did the staff of this wonderful opera house, the Royal Opera House Covent Garden, and finally a television crew from London Weekend volunteered their services so that uh, a, a big donation could be made to the fund and we could bring you highlights of this midnight gala. Well, it's getting on for 11.30 now. The curtain went down on the Royal Ballet about half an hour ago. There's been the most fantastic hassle to get things ready. But in a moment or two, His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, will be arriving and the High Commissioner for Australia, many other distinguished guests. So join us now for the midnight gala at the Royal Opera House, Covent Garden. first music at the gala, the national anthems of Britain and Australia, played by the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra on the stage at the Opera House. This is the Australian national anthem, Advance Australia Fair. Conductor Richard Bonning, the Australian husband of Joan Sutherland, and the gala is introduced by another celebrated Australian exile, the actor Keith Michel, who was born in Adelaide, came to Britain 20 years ago. Keith Michel. Your Royal Highness, Your Excellencies, my Lords, ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege and honour this evening to welcome you all here and to thank you for supporting the Darwin Appeal Fund. On my way to the theatre this afternoon, I heard one passerby say to another, Oh, Darwin, that was just a shanty town. In fact, Darwin was a city with a population of 45,000 people. And Christmas Eve, 1974, will be remembered in the history of Australia for the sudden shocking destruction of the entire city. An Australian journalist who was there wrote that houses exploded upwards, outwards, and downwards, with the debris slicing through everything. Almost 50 people were killed, hundreds injured, and thousands dispossessed. It is the noise of Tracy that the survivors remember most vividly, the wine increasing to a constant shriek, on and on over seven hours, 
deadening sensors so that many didn't notice a roof go or a wall fall in. Some, even days after, could not sleep for the sound of the wind in the now silent city, where even birds, flies and mosquitoes had flown and be blown away. Australians have known natural disasters before. Bushfires are an annual event, flood and drought. But they have never had such a disaster as this. And that people in England, so many thousand miles away, should give thought to helping at such a time is something which I'm sure every Australian here and over there would be profoundly grateful for and proud about. And I'm sure that they would want me to thank you on their behalf and everyone concerned with tonight's concert. Ms. Joan Sutherland, whose idea it was, she instigated the whole idea, the magnificent Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, without whom the idea could not have happened, the entire Royal Opera House staff and stage staff, the London Weekend television crew and Decca Recording Company, all of whom have donated their services tonight. And now we move on to the eagerly awaited entrance of Joan Southern. Joan Southern has chosen to sing a scene from Donizetti's opera Maria Stuarda, Mary Stuart, the tragic story of Mary Queen of Scots. In this scene, Mary is walking in the park of Fotheringay Castle, her prison, with her companion. And this moment of unexpected freedom and her delight in the natural beauty of her surroundings remind Mary of her beloved France, and she sings of her longing to be able to return home. Margareta Elkins, another fine Australian singer, takes the part of Anna.
when Mary hears the sound of hunting horns, she's terrified. And the fear is at the thought of meeting Queen Elizabeth, in whose hands lies her fate. In this final section of the scene, Mary prays that Elizabeth will keep the English throne to which she's been laying claim and leave her to live in seclusion and peace. Thrilling top D seems to bring the house down at Covent Garden. Music by Donizetti from his opera Maria Stuart and a tremendous ovation for Joan Sutherland, conductor, her husband Richard Bonney, also singing with her Heather Margaret Elkins. And now some light relief with two more Australian singers well known in this country in Offenbach's John Darm's duet. Jim's old yet wary, and of ourselves we take good care. To risk our precious lives when cherry, and danger looms when never there. But if we meet a helpless woman, a little boy is that do no harm. We run them in, we run them in, we run them in, we run them in, we show them where the boy shall go. We run the men, we show them where the boys are not. If gentlemen should make a riot and punch each other's heads that night, 
it were quite disposed to keep it quiet, provided that they make it right. But if they do not seem to see it, I give to us our proper terms. We run them in, we run them in, we run them in, we run them in, we show them where the boys are nerves. We run them in, we run them in, we run them in, we run them in, we show them where the boys are nerves. Extra mule, then little butterflies we chase. Like to gamble in things rural, commune with nature face to face. And to our beat and back returning, refresh by nature's holy charm. We run them in, we run them in, we run them in, we run them in, we show the world our boys on guns. We run them in, we run them in, we run them in, we run them in, we show the world our boys on guns. A lovely comedy performance from Clifford Grant and Tom McDonald. And now, one of the best known baritones in the world today from the Metropolitan Opera in New York, the Canadian Louis Quillico. He's going to sing the famous aria from Verdi's Rigoletto, in which the hunchback hero vents his fury on the courtiers whom he believes have abducted his daughter, Gilda. Desperate, he demands to know where they've taken her. Rigoletto's fury gives way to fear, fear for his daughter's life, and he pleads with the nobles for mercy.
Canadian baritone Louis Quillico receiving this tremendous ovation, we must take a brief interval. In the second half, we'll have more singing from the superb Sutherland and the sensational debut of a young English tenor. We'll be back in a moment. Aquarius, part two, production number 1873, date recorded the fir fourth, <coughs> fourth of the second 75, take one. Welcome back to the Midnight Gala, where we're enjoying the violin playing of Erich Grunberg, the leader of the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. This is the prelude to a scene from a rarely performed early opera by Verdi, Il Lombardi. The prelude is followed by a stirring vocal trio, and this will be especially notable for the British debut of Graham Clark, a promising new English tenor. Oh, my God. 
trio from Verdi's opera in Lombardy and a fairy tale debut for the tenor Graham Clark, sounding Italian as if to the manner born, though at the moment he's actually working as a senior sports officer for the Sports Council in Reading. There he is now acknowledging the rapturous applause with Margaret Elkin, Stifford Grant, Eric Grunberg, the violinist, and the conductor, Richard Bond. And now comes the dramatic climax of the evening, a duet from Bellini's opera, Norma. Richard Bonning and his wife pausing for a moment in the wings to get their breath back. Small wonder, it's past one o'clock by now, remember, in the morning. But here they are now, I think, going ahead, yes. Norma is one of Joan Sutherland's most celebrated tragic roles. Norma is a high priestess, and when she discovers that the father of her children is also the lover of her servant, Adalgisa, she decides to give her children to Adalgisa and to then kill herself. Adalgisa tries to persuade Norma to change her mind. The part of Adalgisa is sung by Heather Begg of New Zealand.
Adelgisa is so moved by Norma's determination to die that she refuses to take over the children, promising instead to renounce her lover and help unite him with Norma. <laughs> Tremendous applause at the Royal Opera House for that duet from Norma by Bellini. Joan Sutherland embracing her husband Richard Bonning, Heather Berg and the Royal Philharmonic sharing in the ovation. The Royal Philharmonic Orchestra deserving our special thanks for all they've done behind the scenes to make this midnight gala such a success. And that's the official end of this gloriously rich and dramatic programme in aid of the Darwin Appeal Fund. After the performance, an informal reception in the crush bar. Prince Charles is closely identified with Australia since he spent some of his school days there, and he's also a keen music lover. He flew to London especially to attend the Midnight Gala, and he told me he was very appreciative of the great voluntary effort that had made the occasion possible. And it certainly was a very great occasion. And the benefit to the charity will go on and on, for that uh, video recording you've just seen will hopefully be shown overseas, and the Darwin Relief Fund will also benefit from the proceeds of this long playing record of the performance which Decker had produced in record time. Darwin Song for a City it's called and it's out already only a couple of weeks after the Midnight Gala. Well next week's Aquarius is all about the making of another record. The distinguished pianist Alfred Brendel is in the middle of recording all of Mozart's piano concertos with Neville Mariner and the Academy of St Martin's Orchestra. And Aquarius cameras have been present at the tape sessions to create what I suppose might best be called the anatomy of a record. Anyway, that's next week, but now back to Covent Garden for the encore, which offered some thrilling coloratura singing from Joan Sutherland and another opportunity for that young part-time professional from Reading, Graham Clark, to demonstrate his talents. The final pages of the famous quartet from Verdi's Rigoletto. <laughs> <laughs> 